If you're wanting to get better at Warzone, having the correct settings will really help you out. So in this video, I'll be going over the best settings for Warzone Season 3. So graphic settings, interface settings, audio settings, controller, mouse, and keyboard. We're going to cover everything in this video. If you end up enjoying this and finding it helpful, then drop a like and let's get started. Okay, starting off under the display tab in graphics. If you're on a console, you may not have all these settings. But this first bit is for PC users only. So display mode. You can run either full screen exclusive or full screen borderless. I personally use full screen borderless as I'm a content creator. So I have to alt tab quite often while I'm live streaming and gaming. But if you want the best experience, so lowest input lag and the best performance, full screen exclusive is what you want to run. Then in display monitor, this is where you pick what your screen is. I have it two screens and this G274 QPFQD, that's my main MSI gaming screen. Play adapter, this is where you pick your graphics card. It should be automatically selected. Screen refresh rate, if you're in full screen exclusive, set this to the highest value. And a display resolution, either automatic or what your native resolution on your screen is. Aspect ratio, this should be on 16 by 9 but if you're on like an ultra wide screen, you might have to run one of the other aspect ratios. Display Gamma, I have this on 2.2 sRGB, which is for kind of regular gaming screens. But if you're on a TV, run 2.4. It says it right here. sRGB, so 2.2 is for regular screens, and BT1886 is for TV. For brightness, I actually would recommend turning this up to 55. It just makes the game a little bit brighter, as you can see in those dark environments. Moving down to Constrained Mouse to Game Window, I have that turned off. And NVIDIA Reflex Load Latency. This reduces your system latency, so I actually would recommend having this turned on. Eco Mode Preset is on Custom. And VC and Gameplay and for Menus is disabled. For Custom Frame Rate, if you want to just have the most FPS, have this set to Unlimited, but I would recommend setting a frame rate cap for Gameplay, Menu Custom Frame Rate, and also Out of Focus Custom Frame Rate. So, when you're in the menu, your computer doesn't have to work as hard. I have that set to 85 FPS, and then once I'm in-game, I get up to 170 FPS. But I am having issues with my graphics card overheating, so I've been adjusting this value a lot recently. Menu render resolution, have this on maximal. I don't think this really does much. It just uh, changes the quality of the objects in the menus, which doesn't really matter that much. Pause game rendering, I have that turned off, and focus mode off. Also, high dynamic range, I would recommend having that off because HDR is not implemented very well on computers whatsoever. Quality tab, this is where most of the settings are. So graphic preset, you want that set to custom. Render resolution, have this at 100%. If you're having really bad kind of FPS and maybe your computer is a, a bit older, you could turn this down, but the game will look pretty bad. If you want an even sharper game and have like a super overkill computer, you could run it like 105% or something. It would basically be like an upscaling filter, but just through render resolution. Dynamic resolution turned off and then upscaling and sharpening. I run Fidelity FX Cast. It makes the game a little bit sharper. And I have that set to 80% strength. Uh, path tracing and ray reconstruction, this really hurts performance. So I would leave that turned off. A VRAM scale and target. It's a very important setting. If you're having stutters in your game i would recommend messing with this so somewhere between 50 and 80 percent is what i would recommend and also variable rate shading have that turned on now moving on to details and textures so you want your texture resolution at normal this is the best looking setting because if you go low or very low the textures look really goddamn bad then a texture filter anastrophic i have this set to normal depth of field off Detail quality level on low. Particle resolution, very low. This just changes the quality of the particles. Bullet impacts on and persistent effects turned off. This right here hurts performance quite a bit. So shade quality, have that set to low. If you run it on high, you will have no FPS. And medium, you will also have no FPS. So run that on low, please. On demand texture streaming, have that turned off. That downloads textures off the internet, which might help i have never really noticed a difference so i just leave that turned off and then a local texture streaming quality i have that set to normal this just changes the quality of like the distant map as it says right here 
boosts the streaming quality of distance zones for larger maps. This might affect your performance on something like Urzakstan, but I have not noticed a single difference. Now we're under shadow and lighting. So shadow quality, I have that set to low. Screen space reflections off. I used to run this on low, but prefer having it off. It makes the game look a bit cleaner and you get a tiny bit more FPS. I mean, occlusion, this adds kind of like a shadow under lots of objects, which makes it look better, but I have that set to off. Green space reflections off as well, and static reflection quality low. Finally, under environment, I have tessellation turned off, volumetric quality low, deferred physics quality off, weather grid volumes off, and water quality off. This is what I found to be the best settings for quality, at least for my system. If you have a much more powerful computer than me, with like a 4090 or something, you could run everything maxed out, that does not really matter too much. The final thing under graphics is view, and here it's pretty simple. So FOV, I would recommend somewhere between maybe 105 and about 120. At 105, you lose more peripheral vision. You don't have the fisheye effect. So at 120 FOV, it's a bit harder to spot targets at range, but you do see more on your sides, which is your peripheral vision. So up to you what you run. I find that most people run maxed out or somewhere between 105 and 120. ADS field of view on affected, this just makes the gun a bit smaller and it reduces the effect of recoil so it's a lot easier to shoot at targets. Weapon field of view on wide as well, that makes the gun a bit smaller, easier to shoot at targets once again. Third person field of view, you could just leave this on the default value but there has been some modes where you can play in third person like zombies and that recent third person warzone mode which, which was really quite cool so i have that maxed out vehicle field of view on wide as well and if i go down world motion blur and weapon motion blur turned off film grain off uh, all the camera movements on at least 50 percent just makes the screen shaking less kind of crazy and it also helps with motion sickness third person ads transition third person ads spectator camera at this on game perspective, I don't think this really matters. That's personal preference. Inverted flashbang on. I sometimes play later into the evening, and if there's a massive white flashbang that goes off, I will go blind. So, inverted flashbang it is. And parachute camera perspective on first person. Next up, we're going through interface settings. So, subtitles, I have this all turned off. Subtitle size, default, background opacity, Zero, mini check size, default, default. That's also on the default value. And then if I go into color customization, have these customized. So normally it's a bit more of like a washed out color. But here you can actually pick whatever color you want. So for this green, I believe the default one is this. So it's kind of washed out. This is a bit more saturated. It makes the game look a little bit nicer. And sometimes it's a bit hard to see like pings on the map and all that type of stuff. So this does help out a tiny bit. You can also change your squad member colors, but then if you're in quads and you say, hey, green, go do this, the color might be different on your end and their end, so leave this on default, please. And then also down here, color filter. There's three different filters that you can choose from. It basically applies a filter over the game and also the menus, and it changes the colors a tiny bit. So filter two makes it a bit more orangey and red, and I found it looks really nice. So that is what I use right here with target on both and both at 100%. Then HUD bounds, I would recommend pulling this in a tiny bit. Just means that if you're playing on let's say a TV or just a regular screen, you don't have to look at the very edge of the screen to be able to see your health or that type of stuff. Then minimap shape, that's square. You don't want to use circle. Rotation on, compass on, crosshairs. I have this turned off and then I just use the center dot. It looks way cleaner and I do like that. Hit markers on, damage base hit markers on, player names on, full name, in game text chat turned on. I do sometimes turn this off while I'm live streaming so that if someone whispers me, it doesn't show on the stream and it's a bit more private. Especially helps with griefers as well. And then vehicle hard prompts on never disappear and stamina bar on. Moving down, telemetry, I change this pretty much every single day. I either have it off or I just turn on like the FPS counter or like graphics card temperature. My GPU has been overheating recently, so 
82 Celsius in the menu is not good to see, but I have to get that fixed. <laughs> Also, the server latency is completely bugged, so I would leave that disabled. Then telemetry label size, default, connection meter off, off, off. And then the final few things under interface. Gameplay tips turned off. Skip introduction movie. I have this turned on. So when you open the game, it plays that kind of introduction kind of film. I don't want to sit in the menu for two minutes watching that while trying to get into a game, so I have that turned off. Tool tips on and menu prompts. Depends on if I play on keyboard, mouse, or controller. I played on both today, so I switch that around every now and then. Now we're going over audio settings. This is very important, and you can do this on console as well. So, audio mix. I would recommend headphones. I have tried pretty much all of these, and if you run something like PC speaker, the audio is much more compressed. If, if you run something like cinema, it has a much wider range. So basically what that means is if it's more compressed, the game overall will have kind of louder footsteps and also kind of wider gunshots. And if it's kind of more dynamic range, which is cinema here, the guns are much louder, footsteps are pretty hard to hear. So run something a bit more up to the top here. I run headphones. Seems to work for me. Audio has been very weird in this game. Sometimes you never hear footsteps, sometimes you do. This is where you pick your audio device. So I have a Elgato Wave XLR, so I picked that right here. Speaker output is on stereo, and you can actually test your speaker output, which is pretty cool. Game volume, this depends on what your audio setup is, but here I have it at 100%. Music is zero, dialogue 50%. FX volume stats, gunshots, footsteps, all that type of stuff, 100. And music volume and war tracks on zero. Voice chat on 50. Depends on how I want to run it. I can adjust all the audio with my Wave XLR, which has a really cool piece of audio software. So this does not matter as much to me, but depending on if you're on console, definitely mess around with this. Then under voice chat, so on or lobby, on, on. This way you pick your output device. This is all default settings. Microphone mode, push to talk. I sometimes play with people in game chat and then I just have open mic but push to talk on pc is pretty okay the audio quality in game kind of sucks so don't really use it that often microphone inputs so that's where you pick your microphone this is the kind of volume of your microphone you can test it there as well subtitles we already covered this on the interface but all that on default mono audio i would recommend having this turned off reduce tinnitus sound this removes some of the kind of high-pitched annoying sounds if someone throws like a stun grenade at you, it helps with like ear fatigue and stuff. I have that turned on. War tracks off, juggernaut music off, hit marker sound effects on classic. You could run no hit marker sounds if you want. I up to you. And mute game when minimized is turned off. Now we're moving over to controller settings. I have been playing on both controller and keyboard and mouse. And honestly, both are really good inputs. I would recommend controller over keyboard and mouse. Just because rotational aim assist is utterly broken. But if you're playing on Urzik Sand and like sniping, mouse and key is what you should run. So here, edit button layout. I run both an Xbox and a PS5 controller, so depends. But tactical flipped works pretty well. Bumper ping turned off. I flip L1 and L2, so I shoot with L1 and R1 instead of the buttons at the very back. It makes it a bit easier. And then if you're throwing like an ammo box down, you click the buttons at the very back. Works perfectly. Stick layout preset. That's on default. Controller vibration turned off. Dead zone inputs. This way you customize your dead zones. If you have stick drift, you can test that right here. Test stick dead zone. But you want to basically increase your left stick min and right stick min until there's no stick drift. So if you're not touching your controller and this is moving, you have stick drift. Left stick max and right stick max at 99, and then left trigger and right trigger on 5. Then in the aiming tab, this one is all personal preference, but I've been using 8.8 sensitivity. It's felt pretty decent. I used to run 6.6, but I've been slowly increasing it as I get better at control, and it works really well. I do want to try 10.10 sensitivity, but it's a little bit too fast for me. So once I get used to this, then I'll try 9.9 and then up to 10.10. ADS sensitivity multiply on 0.8. That is all on default there. 
and max is on default as well. Tactical stance sensitivity multiplier 0.8. Then down here, aim response curve type, I would recommend dynamic. Works really well. I've seen a few people using linear as well, but dynamic is what I use. Helps out with aiming once you get used to it. It's a lot better than the default one. And then aim response curve slope scale at one. This right here is on 0.8 as well. Transition timing on instant, and I have custom sensitivity per zoom turned off. Then aim assist type, you want aim assist on, of course, because Without aim assist, playing on controller is rather difficult. Aim assist type on Black Ops. This is the strongest kind of aim assist type that you can use in here. ADS aim assist on as well. Third person on assist and motion sensor stuff all turned off. The final part is the gameplay tab. So here, automatic tax sprint works really well on controller. I'm just going to scroll down here. So you, you go double tap, slide behavior on tap to slide. You can copy this, but... There's a lot of settings in here, and it's really all personal preference, in my opinion. Like, you want prioritize interact on 100%. Armor play behavior on apply all. I don't know why you'd have it on apply one. It keeps going down. Backpack control on directional buttons. You can change that all in here. Akimbo behavior independent. There's a lot of settings in here. But yeah, that is what I use on controller. Now we're moving over to keyboard mouse. This is what I primarily play on, but I do sometimes play on controller as I mentioned earlier. So mouse sensitivity. I have a mouse with a DPI of 1600, and I find that a sensitivity of 2.5 works really well. If you want to figure out what your final sensitivity is, multiply your DPI with your mouse sense in here. 1600 DPI times 2.5 is 4000, so that's my final number. For my sensitivity it works really well at a slower sense i found tracking to be kind of hard but if i turn the sensitivity even higher it's kind of hard to do snipes and that type of like precision aiming that you should be doing ADS sensitivity multiplier i have this on 0.85 transition timing on instant and tax stance on 0.85 as well focus 0.85 ADS sensitive tap is on relative with 1.78 if you're on a 1440p screen, 1.78 is what you want to use. And then I believe on a 1080p screen, it's 1.33. Don't quote me on that, though. Then, custom sensitivity per zoom off once again. That's default. Calibration is all turned off. And use system mouse cursor off as well. So here are all my key binds. I've customized a few of them, but it's mostly all default settings. The... That's all default there. Then if I go down a bit more, I remove changing weapons off the scroll wheel. I do not like that. I never liked using the scroll wheel. I just use number one and number two. Also number three on the keyboard to switch between my guns. Advanced combat keybinds in here. Then if I keep going down, this is the vehicle keybinds right here. Pause the video and then copy them if you want. Scoreboard, add that on tab. And then the battle rail scoreboard on Y. You, it's normally on the tilde key, but I have a 65% keyboard. So I have to click two buttons to access that because you need to use the function keys. So setting this to Y, if I just want to quickly see what the stats are, works great. Backpack tab, that's all default, default, default. Ping wheel. I have that disabled. It's normally on left alt, but if you alt tab, then you don't really want to accidentally ping in game. There's a lot of settings in here. They're mainly all on default though. And this is the menu advanced keybinds as well. The final part is the gameplay keybinds. And this is mainly all default as well. Some things have been changed. I'll point that out. But just like the controller bit, pause the video if you want to copy this. But there's a lot in here. I do not use automatic tax sprint on keyboard mouse. By the way, it is not worth it. You just click the shift key and then you auto sprint. With that, you change this to single tap run. And then when you click the shift key, you instantly tack sprint. Works really nicely. This is the movement advanced key buttons. That's pretty much all on default. I've disabled all the mantling stuff. I've never found that that useful. You're trying to shoot at someone and then you accidentally jump up onto a box or something. Not great. And then if I keep going down, combat behaviors, this is mainly all on default. Apply all armor plate behavior, combat advanced, that is all default as well. I believe I changed the weapon mount exit 
to instant weapon switch wraparound off as well. So I, I don't use the scroll wheel whatsoever. So one for my primary gun, two for my secondary works perfectly fine. Vehicle pavers is on default overlay. I believe this is all on the default value. Yes, it is. But yeah, so those were the game settings. Now we're going to jump into Windows and I'll show you a few other settings which you should change. Okay, so type in graphics and then go to graphic settings and here change default graphic settings. In here you want hardware accelerated GPU scheduling turned on and variable refresh rate turned on. Next up on the desktop, right click, go to show more options. This might be different if you're on Windows 10, but I'm on Windows 11 here. I go into the NVIDIA control panel. And in here, I just want to double check that my screen refresh rate is completely maxed out at the highest possible value. My screen is 1440p, as you can see, and 170 hertz refresh rate. And then next up, manage 3D settings. And here, I used to recommend some other values, but nowadays, I just recommend having this all on the default value. It works perfectly fine. One last thing as well. If you have a G-Sync screen, I would recommend turning G-Sync on for windowed and full screen mode in here. It just reduces screen tearing, or I believe removes screen tearing, and it really makes the picture look a bit cleaner. Of course, you need a G-Sync or G-Sync compatible screen to be able to use that. Now we're moving on to the config settings. So go to Documents, Call of Duty, Players, Options for COD23, and then in here, you want to change your renderer work account to how many CPU cores you have. So I have a Ryzen 7 5800X, just eight to CPU cores. If you don't know what you have, go to Task Manager and then click on Performance and you can see what you have right here. It also says the cores, but I believe on Intel 12th and 13th and also 14th gen, it's a bit different. So I would recommend Googling what your CPU is and then typing in how many cores you have right here. Down here at Corpse Limit, I have this set to zero. Show Blood Effects on False and Blood Limit on True. Show brass is on zero as well. These settings help a tiny bit with performance. It's mainly just to clean up the kind of visual noise that the game has. But yeah, so that was my best settings guide for Warzone Season 3. I will be providing a config file download in the description. So you would download that and then put that into your documents folder and then you'll have all my settings. If you have any questions, please write a comment down below and I will try my best to respond. If you found this video helpful, drop a like, subscribe for more, and I will catch you in the next one.